It should be said that I'm dreadfully and cripplingly terrified by spiders. This is important later on. Even if it's only the size of my thumbnail, I can't even go near one. I used to admire my sister for being the bravest person ever. She'd kill those things without hesitation, as I hyperventilated and squirmed on my bed. Okay, maybe that last part is over-exaggerated, but I think you catch my point, and it can't be stressed enough. Spiders terrify me. Full-blown panic road. To get to the actual story, when I was 10, my family was invited to stay at my aunt and uncle's new place to stay for the weekend. The drive there was always a few hours, but we made it a little later than planned. Once we arrived to their house, it was nothing but darkness covering the streets. The only visible things that the very dim porch lights could illuminate. Of course, this made things very difficult to see, much in the way of little details, and my eyesight is bad enough in the daytime. As we were walking across the street to her front lawn and driveway, I noticed two tall pieces of wood on either side, with a width no more than that of your average doorway. They were stuck at the front lawn to the side, not entirely sure what purpose they served, but there they were. Per usual, I found myself separated from my family, as they were still gathering their things and getting out of the car while I was stretching after the drive. Finally, my mom and grandpa told me to come along as it was time to go in and greet everyone. They began walking ahead of me, and so I started following. I looked around a bit more to adjust my eyes and then started making my way to the front door. Walking straight toward those two wooden stakes. I would have walked past through them, but the moment I got right up to them, literally about to step forward, I heard something behind me. A woman's voice yelling urgently, At Club Silencio, stop! Do not walk through! Move around! At first I brushed this off, despite looking over my shoulder and yelling hello like some cliché scene in a horror film. I figured it was my mom's voice, but it wasn't her tone. And it definitely wasn't my grandma's, they were both inside at this point. When I walked in, I asked my mom why she yelled to me to stop walking, and to especially not go through the stakes. To which she said she had no idea what I was talking about, nor did anyone else there hear anything or call out my name. Mostly, everyone was asleep. The next day, when I walked out of the house, I definitely entered a scene from my own personal, based on a true story horror film. The property they were renting had a huge, huge infestation of brown recluse and black widow spiders. Everywhere you looked, there would be at least five or six giant spiders hanging down from trees, spider webs everywhere. Spiders on windows, on tops of cars, but mostly just all over the bushes and trees. And some dead ones on the ground, probably from being stepped on. And what was stuck right between those two wooden stakes? At my eye level, low enough to wrap around my face and hair, a gorgeously spun huge spider web with one of the most ghastly, freakishly large spiders I've ever seen at the center, with an equally sized, just as nightmarish looking spider a little closer to the edge. Had I not heard that voice that night, I would have walked head first into a couple of disturbing, poisonous arachnids in the middle of darkness. I get chills just thinking about this. I had just returned from my job at a theatre, which is about 20 minutes away from my house, and had already let the dogs out to do their business. We had come back in and I went to feed the cats, of which there were three. As I had the front door open with the metal security door shut, 
as I just ordered a pizza. As I turned my back to the door, I was walking to the cat area when I heard a loud bang. I turned and saw that the metal door is shaking and making a sound like someone is pounding on it. As I'm looking right at it, no one there. Then a mug of coffee flies off of this chest to the right of me. I see this happen, not hear it. It just flew the fuck off that chest and shatters on the floor. Next, these four oxygen tanks and the, the, the husband father of the household of the house used as he was close to passing and soon did pass November 1st of this year fly across the room knocking down two of those portable TV side tables with it. Then the cats start hissing and growling while the two dogs are cowering behind me in the kitchen and there were loud bangs and thuds throughout the house. However, it wasn't an earthquake because I felt no shaking and no rumbling and nothing else was moving around or disturbed. Needless to say, I was really scared and got chills. I called my mom and she told me to leave. I called the owners and explained the situation and I didn't feel safe and I didn't and drove back to my apartment to return tomorrow. The other night, around 10 or 11, my mom and I were watching a movie. It had been raining hard, so there was basically just a white noise coming from outside. As I'm watching the movie, for some reason or another, the whistler popped into my head. Then I remembered the actual whistle with its inexplicably chilling, distinct tone. Then I heard the faintest sound of the whistle but it was so faint that I thought it was just in my head. Kind of like when you can hear and see things in your head, but there's no actual noise. But then it got a little louder from outside. I kind of had a moment where I was struck cold and in shock with disbelief. There's no way I'm actually hearing it. It must be the movie. The next one is louder and now I know I'm not imagining it. So I pause halfway through the whistle and I turn to my mom. It ends. A moment later, another whistle. This time very loud, as if whoever is whistling is standing outside the window, which was open. I literally felt a jolt go through me and I just yelled, holy shit, did you just hear that? And my mom said something along the line of, yeah, that whistling sound. I thought it was in the movie. Then goes on to mimic the whistle. This legit gave me chills and freaked me out. Even creepier is how it just stopped the moment I called attention to it and muted the TV. And since we live in an apartment complex, there are constantly people walking around outside that you can hear. But when the whistling stopped, it was just silence. There wasn't any sound of movement, but I wasn't going near the damn window. I just sat there and stared at it. Thankfully, the legend states that if you hear the whistle loud and clear, that means he's far away. When it's quiet or in the distance, he's close. Actually, that makes it even creepier, because that means those hushed ones I heard meant it was somewhere close during that time. Also, why did it happen to start right after the whole whistler story just randomly popped in my head? I think I'm losing my mind, but my mom heard it. For the record, I'm not a religious person, but I do have my beliefs. This instance is one reason that I have a certain faith and hope that there is something on the other side. I was in my early 20s going through the worst time in my life. I was falling more into substance abuse and coming to terms with some childhood trauma and resulting post-traumatic stress disorder. I also began to have seizures and my mental health was beginning to decline. 
One night, I leave my former friend's house. It was about a 20 minute drive to get home. I was sober, but drained. I may have smoked some weed earlier in the day, but that was all. I felt utterly hopeless. I began breaking down, sobbing while driving. Though I was raised in a Christian household, at that time I really struggled with it and wasn't a believer, definitely not a Christian. But I was open-minded. I became so desperate, I finally started speaking out loud, pleading with whatever God or higher power was out there to please give me a sign. If I didn't get a sign that night, I was dead set on committing suicide. I really had nothing to live for during that time. At least it felt that way. I'm pleading and begging and crying the whole drive, but no sign. I keep saying that if I don't get a sign by the time I'm home, then I'll be checking out. I just need something to show me there is hope and that there was some kind of purpose to my being alive. I finally get to my house and while still crying, I turn off my car. The second I do this, a gorgeous ball of prismatic light appears in front of my windshield. Immediately, I just shut down in a daze. It was absolutely mesmerizing. It was comforting. It was so impossibly bright, but it didn't hurt my eyes. For a brief moment, I felt the most peace I had ever felt. What felt like five minutes was really only about a few seconds, but it stopped me in my tracks. I immediately break down again, but feel this weight lift off me. I keep saying thank you. It took me forever to compose myself to walk in. I really can't explain this other than it was truly a sign. Sure, it could have been a hallucination, but I've never hallucinated like that before, even during a psychotic break. And if it was a coincidence, then holy shit, it lined up perfectly. And it just doesn't feel like it was. While I'm still not religious, I do have a certain relationship with my own higher power, or whatever is watching over me. But I'll never forget this moment, ever. And I really hope to be engulfed in that light again someday, when I pass on. Before I explain, I swear I'm not in the midst of psychosis or hallucinating or anything. This only happens when I'm by myself. One day, I was home and noticed a bee on the doorframe that leads to my back patio. It wasn't moving at all, and when I tried to get it to fly away, it had no reaction. Didn't think much about it, and went back inside. This was around 11 a.m. I go out again an hour or two later, and there it is again. Same spot, not moving. It was in the same exact spot. I thought maybe it was dead or had some kind of parasite or something, but it just stayed still. I even got up close to it and blew on it, and nothing. It stayed in that one spot the entire day. I didn't want to kill it because I don't mind bees. It's just wasps that are the assholes. I come out at night and it's still there. But when I came back around the corner after my sig, it was finally gone. I'm on my break at work having a cig on the sidewalk, just sitting down on my phone. A random bee just flies over to me and lands on the ground right in front of me. Once it landed, it just stayed in one spot facing me. I blow on it again and nothing. It didn't try to fly at me or around me, it just stayed in one place. I got up to walk away and it still didn't move. But when I walked to the door of my work, it followed me and then landed on the door frame and just sat there again. I get into my car around midnight to run to the gas station. And as I'm driving, another bee just flies up into my face and then lands on the window. I roll the window down, but nothing. I had to stop my car, open my door, and I gently just touched it and it wouldn't move, but then eventually flew off. 
Just now, I go out for a smoke, and the first thing I see is a bee landing on the chair I always sit in. But then it flew over and landed on the actual ashtray, and just sat there. So I went to the front porch. So, I don't know if this means anything at all. I've been trying to research what bees represent spiritually, so I don't know how else to research this because it's just so bizarre, and I've never heard of this phenomena happening. Usually bees will just fly around me and you shoo them away or whatever. So I've never seen one just sit still for a whole day in one spot or in front of me at work or how it's even got into my car since I don't leave the windows down or anything. Plus, I think it's a bit unusual for a bee to be out and about during the night. What the hell could any of this mean? If anything, it's just strange. For context, I live in a small village in the country parts of a small European country. The most popular high school in my area also had a special needs children program. And in it was this nice guy who was a bit on the special side, but he was very nice and got along with everyone. Let's call him Jay. I also had a really good childhood friend. Let's call him M whose family bought land in this village, and that land was right next to Jay's house. M's family bought land with a house, tore everything except the foundation and cellar attached to it down, and built a new house on the foundations. M's family was a bit notorious because they got a lot of money from some shady, unproven business, so they had a reputation that they only care about money. The family had a lot of infighting, alcohol addiction, divorce, etc. So there definitely was a lot of negative energy in that house. M repeatedly mentioned throughout our childhood how he had constant nightmares since they moved in. He had to sleep with lights. They heard footsteps and whispering in the house, etc. About a year ago now, M's parents divorced and the father moved out. Since he moved out, they started hearing noises from the cellar, which still remained from the original foundation. So they decided to buy a camera to see what's going on. What they found is downright chilling. They found the special needs neighbor, Jay, who was standing completely still in the corner of the cellar. He was facing in towards the corner wall and was mumbling gibberish. When they confronted him and asked him what he was doing in their cellar, he replied only with, they were calling me, or staring towards the wall. After Jay was brought safely home, they put a padlock on their cellar. Day after day, for about two weeks after they put the lock on the cellar, Jay walked over to M's front door in the middle of the night and ringed. And when the door was open, he started pleading and begging M's mother if she unlocks the cellar because they were calling him. M and his mother moved out in the next few days and the house is now for sale. I believe it was a Saturday. My dad and I were headed to my cousin's graduation party. My dad had told me there was a neat old house now a museum, with some spooky history behind it on the way. We both love those kinds of things, so I agreed to stop and visit it. Once we got there, it was a little less than we expected. Everything was locked up, so we couldn't get a good look inside. The story behind the house, now known as Hex Hollow, goes like this. There was a local man by the name of Nelson Ramier, a powwow doctor, who was suspected of being a witch. One late night in November of 1928, two men broke into his house and beat him to death. They attempted to burn his body, but it didn't burn. To this day, there are still burn marks around the body on the floorboards of that house. Anyway, after a while of going around, taking pictures and looking around, 
I thought it might be funny if I jiggled the handle to the front door of the house. Oh, was I so, so wrong about that? I truly believe I made whatever or whoever was in that house very, very angry. That night when I got home, a really odd feeling came over me. A feeling as if I was being watched. I kept thinking about how earlier in the day at the graduation, my cousin's baby stared at me with complete terror. Along with all of that, out of the corner of my eyes, I started seeing these dark figures dart across the room. I was completely terrified and I barely got any sleep at all. I'm unsure how to describe what I saw in my dreams last night, but I'll try my best. There was an array of black and white images that replayed over and over in my head. I would wake up terrified and in tears, fall back asleep and have the same images repeat themselves. I don't exactly remember what those images were. The only thing that stood out to me is that they were black and white. The next morning, I still had this overwhelming feeling that someone was watching me. I had no idea what to do other than to go and explain it to my parents. We're a pretty religious family, so we decided to pray, and as soon as we did that, the overwhelming feeling stopped. Although I'm still unsure about some of the things that happened to me that night, I'm fairly certain of two things. One, that Mr. Raymer of some entity had attached himself to me for a short period of time. Two, that I will never ever mess with something that isn't mine, especially if it's from the deceased. My mom has owned her house for 18 years now. There have always been small, bizarre occurrences around the house, the kind that you can explain away or simply ignore. Things falling off counters or going missing, strange noises, a feeling of being watched. Footsteps down the hallway all the time. We never talked about it and I never felt scared or even had any idea that our house was actually haunted. The bathroom at the house is located at the very end of a long hallway and my bedroom is directly next to it. It was summertime and I was about 14 or 15, that age where you would stay up talking to your friends on the phone all night. I was on the phone with my best friend, it was 4am, when I distinctly heard footsteps running down the hallway, into the bathroom, and the bathroom light clicks on. Immediately, I get up to check out what's going on, thinking if one of my younger sisters is running to the bathroom at 4am, obviously something's wrong. Maybe 10 seconds elapsed before I look into the bathroom. There's nobody in there and the light is on. I check on my sisters and my mom. Everybody in the house is sleeping like the dead. I'm honestly horrified and my friend on the phone experienced the whole thing with me. The next day, I told my mom. She tells me that she knows the house is haunted by a little boy in a red sweater because she has seen him herself running down the hallway. Years later, my stepdad on one end of the hallway and my mom on the other, they see him again, the boy in the red sweater. He yells like a child playing and runs down the hallway into the bathroom and he disappears. Something about this is inherently sad. The idea of a child stuck in a purgatorial loop. What was he running from? What was he running to? Who is he? Or who was he? What happened to him? Hi, so I work overnight in a funeral home. My shift starts at 7 p.m. and I get off at 6 a.m. We've had some creepy things happen and I am loving it. I wanted to share it all with somebody, but didn't know who. Here are a few of the things. This one happens quite often. Outside of the prep room, the place in the funeral home where we embalm bodies, 
we will hear footsteps pacing the hallway. At any given point, there are no more than four people in the building on a normal night. So for two people to be in the prep room and hear this while everybody else is out on first calls would rule out on the footsteps belonging to anybody. This one also happens maybe two or three times a week. The door in my office will slam shut. The other day, for example, I walked through the office door after getting a drink from our break room. I went to our dressing area and the door literally slammed shut behind me. It also happens when I'm at my desk and totally alone in the funeral home. The hallway outside my office with the door that slams shut, I can also hear footsteps pacing back and forth. I tend to just close my office door when I'm working so I don't have to hear it all. Back to the prep room, one night I was chatting with two other co-workers outside the prep room. We had just finished embalming some people and were talking a bit of a break before cleaning up and disinfecting and sterilizing everything. We were all standing around outside the door and hear something hit the far wall of the prep room and then hit the ground. Me being me, I went to investigate and it was our trocar button tool. But the last person to use it, we all saw him set the tool down on his prep table, about 30 feet away from the wall that it hits before dropping to the ground. Another thing in the prep room that I didn't personally experience, but my coworker on the other shift swears by this, that he was prepping somebody while he was alone in the building and the phone on the wall started dialing out. The phone dialed a funeral home in Missouri. The same funeral home that the person on the prep table was going to be shipped to. Last one, this happened last night actually. We have industrial yellow cabinets that our flammable fluids are stored in. On top of those cabinets are plastic bins that we will put babies in before going in the cooler. That way, they can be more protected. Anyways, all of our bins fell off the top of the cabinet. There were three of us in the building. I was coming around the corner when I saw it. One person was in the prep room and the closest person to the cabinet was easily over 30 feet away. I love my job. Okay, to start this off, I'm just going to explain a few things. I work with my mum and we are cleaners. We drive around all day going from house to house to clean homes. This is the first time my mum and I have encountered a paranormal experience at work. So we had three houses to clean on the 7th of this month. Two of the houses were owned by the same family. The first house was nice, nice view of the bay and stuff. I was on kitchen and my mom was on bathrooms. We kept hearing creaks in the wooden floors and on the stairs. A few light knocks here and there, but thought nothing of it, as the first house this family owned was quite old as well. We did get an odd feeling in the house we were so focused on work, we just got the job done and went to their next house around the corner. But the second house was more new and pretty big. We would be there for a good few hours as it was just my mum and I that day. We got the bulk of the work done, then started changing beds. That's when I told my mum the last house felt a bit odd and I think there were some ghosts there. I then told her what I heard at that house and the way she looked at me after I was done telling her immediately came across that she witnessed something. So I said, you noticed too? She then went on to tell me that when she was in the bathroom at the first house, she saw a black figure walk past the bathroom door in the corner of her eye. But thought it was me going around dusting down furniture or something. I didn't do dusting there because we were running out of time and had to get a move on. We just assumed that maybe it was a late family member of the home hanging around and making sure we do our job right and nervously laughed it off. Mum then walked out of the bedroom to grab some pillowcases but when she looked down the stairs she saw another figure. This one was more greyish white. Look at her from the bottom of the stairs and run into the laundry room. Now 
My mum doesn't scare easily with paranormal experiences from lots of other encounters at home and from her childhood home. But she jumped and her face tingled. She then ran back into the room and told me what she saw. We both kind of got excited but nervous. And then I said to the spirits, don't worry, we're just cleaning your house. Then mum kept talking about what just happened, but as she was talking, I heard a voice reply to me from down the stairs. Mum and I quickly went quiet to try and hear, but as soon as mum stopped talking, the spirits finished what they were saying. So I unfortunately just heard them mumble a reply. I wish I, wish I knew what exactly they said. Anyways, mum and I quickly got the rest of the job done and packed up. As I was about to lock the door on my way out, I told the ghosts they couldn't follow us home and they aren't welcome to come with us and stuff. Just in case it would try to latch onto us and follow us. So the other night, I was sitting on my porch smoking a cigarette, as I usually do late at night. I was home alone, my boyfriend was at work at the time and I just heard really loud screaming. I look behind me and I see what looks like a woman just walking down the street, screaming at the top of her lungs, and she looked right at me. My initial thought was maybe it was just some weirdo or someone under the influence of something. But after more thought, I realized that the scream didn't really sound human. It sounded like something I've never heard before. After that, I thought maybe it was a skinwalker, but my mother informed me that chances are it was a banshee. For some backstory on why I think maybe she's warning me of my boyfriend's passing, it's because a couple nights before the potential banshee sighting, me and my mom had very similar dreams. In my dream, my boyfriend had passed and I was trying to figure out how to cope with his passing. In my mom's dream, I was giving birth to a child and kept saying, I need to take care of the baby. I promised to their father I would, hinting at the idea that the father was dead. I don't know what I saw, but I'm hoping for maybe some insight on banshees and just help me figure out what I saw. I saw online that Irish families can have their own banshee and I'm third generation American from an Irish family if that has any relevance. It happened several years ago. I don't remember the exact date, but we can assume it was around 2007. I was about eight years old then, but I still remember the whole event until today. At the time, I lived in a family house in the countryside, in the southeastern part of Poland. You can imagine that post-Soviet vibe. Nobody in the area had internet at home, and the most advanced technology available in the village was the Siemens C60 or another Nokia 3510i, if someone was rich enough. There was also another house in the yard next to our house, old, but entirely made of wood and already then out of use for a long time. From other people's stories, I know that the origins of this building date back to the end of the 1890s. Before the World Wars, that house served as a kind of village nursery and school for children. From my parents' reports, I know that my grandparents lived in this place and they themselves remember those years from their childhood. There was no dark secret associated with the building itself that I have ever heard of, although I must admit that this house has always bothered me. During the day, nothing prevented me from walking freely next to him or even looking inside. However, when it was getting dark, I was even afraid to look at him through the window of my family house. I felt a lot of stress and anxiety then, but of course, I wouldn't tell anyone about it. That building was in bad shape as long as I can remember it. Wooden legs were rotten, there were holes in the roof, and the windows were missing glass. These were sealed with old bags, 
effectively blocking the greater part of light that penetrated inside. I also remember to this day how while playing with a stick in a rotten beam, I found a fragment of a rifle bullet. A few centimeters long, a round piece of metal, crushed at its sharpened part. Probably a memento from the First or Second World War. It was summer, an ordinary sun, sunny day. On days like this, I like to look inside this old house as the light that filled it looked almost magical. There was no darkness. Everything was sufficiently lit by the streams of the sun. Back then, I liked rummaging in old cabinets and drawers and playing with the tools I found. At that time, this building served as our private shed. So all household tools were put there so that they would not take up space. I remember going inside and closing the door behind me. Why did I do this? I don't know. I've never dared to be inside alone with the door closed before. I probably wanted to calm down a bit and look for something interesting in old tools. After a few minutes, it began to seem as if I heard fewer and fewer outside sounds. The noise of the wind seemed to fade away and the birds seemed to wander away, escaping slowly with their singing. And then I heard it. Music seemed to be coming from the attic a quiet, muffled tune from the gramophone. It sounded like the most typical music of the 20s. There was no one in the house except me. The building also didn't have an electrical installation. However, I heard the melody coming from above the ceiling more and more clearly, as if someone there were relaxing to the calm beats of a quiet melody. I left quickly from there and when I was outside, I felt overwhelming, paralyzing fear. I heard the sound of the wind again, the singing of birds and the sounds typical of the village. However, there was no trace of the music. I haven't told anyone from my family about it so far. It seemed so unreal to me then, as if it was just a dream. Several years have passed and I still remember the whole situation very well. It's not easy for me to believe in any paranormal phenomena. So I cannot explain what's happened then. Was it really true? Or maybe I had a very realistic dream that my childhood mind confused with reality. I have no idea. My son is 10 months old and still sleeps in my room, but I have his clothes hanging up in a small closet in the bedroom meant to be his. We bought this town home back in summer and I'll bring him to the closet with me in his bedroom to look for pajamas or an outfit for daycare. Every single time I bring him there, he looks right into the darker part of the closet. We have sliding doors for this closet and he smiles and laughs right away. His eyes literally followed something back and forth and just locked on it. He doesn't do this in any other part of the house. At first, I thought it could be one of the cubbies I have with a picture of a cartoon bear, but I realized he doesn't even look at it. Today, I tested it out again and of course he smiled and giggled right away. He even put his head into my chest like he was shy. And he only does that when one of my friends come over or someone he doesn't know too well. It honestly really freaked me out. The other day, I showered in the bathroom that connects to my bedroom, which he sleeps in. I was getting ready after the shower and I swear I heard something whisper my son's name. I went to check and saw nothing. My son was still asleep. What do you guys think? Is it a good spirit? Bad? Should I be worried? I'm pregnant with number two and I wanted to move him to his own bedroom soon, but this is making him want to keep him with me.